Good morning, everyone. This is Kristen Rodman, Director of Talent Programs for the Chicagoland Chamber of Commerce. Thank you for joining us today for our weekly webinar series with our training partner, Illinois Biz. Today, we'll discuss key actions you can take to support your organization's culture during these unprecedented times. As we continue to deal with the impact of COVID-19 on the business community, many of us are adjusting to the new normal of working virtually while still trying to stay connected to colleagues and partners. Now more than ever, it's important to promote the vision and beliefs of your organization to employees and to maintain a strong organizational culture. For those of you who are joining via Zoom, you can submit a question in writing at any point during the webinar using the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. We have time at the end and we'll get to as many questions as possible. We will also make a recording of this and every webinar in the series available for streaming online at our website, chicagolandchamber.org. Now let's get started. It's my pleasure to turn things over to two experts from Illinois Biz, Todd Stukenberg, President and CEO, and Francine Pellman, Senior Consultant, who will lead us through this discussion on key actions you can take to support your organization's culture during the COVID-19 pandemic. Todd and Francine. Kristen, thank you. And thank you to the Chamber for this great opportunity to be able to speak to the group this morning. This is Todd Stukenberg. I'm with Illinois Biz. And I have with me Francine Pellman, uh, one of our senior consultants with Illinois Biz. And as we go to the next slide, this is a, a culture is a topic that creates significant confusion for many. And it might be particularly confusing in the scenario we're in now because people oftentimes think of culture as something that's present and impactful when people are able to convene together. And certainly in the circumstances that we're in now, that's not the case. However, the reality is, is culture right now might be more important than ever before. And uh, before we get started with that, I think it's, it's important for people to have some context with at least the way that we're looking at culture within the, the discussion today. And that is culture is the ongoing cumulative product of principles and behaviors that influences the attitudes and actions of a group. And so because of that, you can see it's an invisible hand that guides people's perceptions and actions. And it's really developed over a long period of time within an organization. And it doesn't simply go away when circumstances change or when people are scattered about. It's still there acting uh, in the background, if you will. It's very, a culture in an organization or within a team is dynamic and responsive. It's constantly in change and it will certainly change given a change in environment and given a change in, in the way of people interacting. The important piece of that that must be recognized and particularly in light of current conditions is that a culture must be nurtured. A culture is something that is akin to a living thing within an organization. It has to be taken care of in order for it not to be moving in a direction that perhaps could be detrimental. If we go to the next slide, we can talk a little bit more about some of the foundational elements of culture and the impact that they might have. I'll suggest to you that there are really about four key components to any culture. Uh, the first uh, element is the organizational vision. And the organizational vision is something that should be long-term inspirational to a group. It's what that group is aspiring to. It's what they're striving for and why they're really pushing into the future. And most of the time in most uh, organizations that we see, that's something that's set early on in the, in the um, maturation process of an organization and it stays in place really uh, inf infinitely with the organization. However, we're in very different times now and I will suggest that the vision might have to have some type of adaptation to it. Is it still relevant? Has it changed in light of the situation that we're in? And is it sustainable? I'll give you an example that might seem a little, a, a little far-fetched, but it's, it, it's, I think it's an important one and it's particularly relevant given the impact that this had on this, on this area. And that is, if an Italian restaurant had a vision to provide the most authentic Italian cuisine in a realistic, uh, authentic environment, well, today that vision is impacted dramatically because people can't go to that environment. So the organization that the people involved in that will have to look at it and say, what can we do and what is our vision now? And it should it be temporarily changed to providing the most authentic cuisine, the best cuisine that we can 
for people that have, can only enjoy it as a, in a takeout environment. So as a simplistic as that might be, that's where an, or, an organizational vision, which is usually set in stone to a certain extent, must kind of be reevaluated right now to provide that inspiration, provide that, um, that uh, future um, uh, area that the organization really wants to move toward. Let's go to the next slide. And the next slide is gonna to speak to the mission and the purpose of an organization. That mission and purpose is, is maybe a level down and more gives here, why are we here and what are we doing? And I think it's really important, again, to look at that within the confines of where organizations are today. Can the mission connect today? For example, if a manufacturing company has had it as a part of its mission to provide the very best parts, for example, the automotive industry, could that manufacturing organization adapt the mission, potentially just temporarily to say, to provide the very best parts and support to healthcare? because of the needs that we have. Because that mission then inspires people and brings them the passion that they need to work in very difficult times. The other thing that a mission uh, must be uh, looked at it, it, with, uh, with open eyes is, is it sustainable for after the pandemic? Obviously we're changing our world to some degree in the circumstances we have today and we may be changing organizations. The mission of an organization may have to adapt because of that, because of the changing environment of what we come out to after um, our, current, our current circumstance. Another important component of the mission is, does it provide security for the team? Because people are, their worlds have been shaken and, and, and they're, they're concerned and, and they're, uh, they're doubtful with some things. Can, can the mission say, hey, we're doing something that's important. We're doing something that has long-term impact to give people some sense of security with where they're going and their organization is going and the contributions that they're making. Let's go to the next slide and hit the next foundational element, and that is shared values. This is one that I would suggest really should never change, even in light of uh, the changing circumstances. Values, basically those behaviors and those things that are held um, as requirements within an organization should be a bad, bedrock in good times and bad. They should be something that, that people involved with that team can rely on to know that they're going to be uh, expected. And I think the one thing that has to be attuned to here in the current circumstance is that organizations and the leadership within organizations really need to demonstrate living examples of how the values are in action today. Uh, how are the values being lived out even when people are scattered around and not uh, together in the work environment? The other component that's really important is to not waver away from the values. There's a tendency oftentimes when things uh, really fall out of the normal routine to allow there to be a gray area when it comes to values. That can't be. Um, for example, we see a lot of times in organizations where integrity is a critical value. And when business conditions change, sometimes people, well, we, we can bend the rules a bit in order to adapt. That's a recipe for problems. That's a recipe for disaster because people rely on the values to understand what are the behaviors that are required and expected in this organization. And so the one comment we would really in, uh, in, encourage and enforce here would be uh, organizations should never waver from values. Let's go to the next one. And this is one that oftentimes people don't include when they think about the cultural constructs and that is communication systems. While it's incredibly important and, and most of the literature you'll see will acknowledge vision uh, mission and values as key components of a culture, those only go so far because if there aren't the types of communication systems in place that are needed, then it's hard for people to recognize the other cultural constructs. Given where we are today, these communication systems are more important than ever before because the normal communication pathways that are in an organization have been entirely disrupted or disconnected. And so we, we suggest that this is the time to really put in place and strengthen communication systems and use different ones. For example, one that as Illinois Biz engages with its clients that we recommend is what we would call a pulse survey. Get a sense of how people within the organization are feeling. 
it's an, oftentimes you don't think of a survey as a communication vehicle, but that's truly what it is. It opens up a different mechanism for people within an organization to communicate without feeling self-conscious or without feeling restrained. And so getting, a, giving, getting out a short survey to organiz, your organization and your team is one way to ensure that you're getting some of the feelings and feedback um, that you need in order to be successful and to sustain the culture and be able to weather the storm so as it is right now. Another comp key component with the communication systems is to stay consistent. Communication has to be available. It can't go away even in light of the distance and increase it as needed because there's some of the, the natural non-formal uh, communication is not happening. And we'll talk a little bit about that uh, in, in a bit. And in fact, I would suggest that too much communication right now is probably better than too little. I would rather have uh, organizations err on the side of giving people more information than they need than people feeling that they're on an island and not sure what's really going on. And so communication systems and establishing them, establishing routine and opening up pathways using the technologies and capabilities that are there, like the one we're using right now, Zoom, uh, makes it much more viable for organizations to feel intact. Let's go to the next slide and let's talk a little bit about the impact of today's environment. And it's a connection to what I just spoke about, and that is there is less informal interaction. There are fewer of those, let's call them ad hoc communications going on right now. And that's an important distinction to make. And it's something that people need to try to adjust to and, and try to bring into normal, uh, a normalized um, uh, approach as possible. So because of that less informal interaction, uh, there needs to be other ways to try to bring it back because of the, the, the ways that people have had, you know, talking around the water cooler, if you will, or at the co you know, getting a coffee is not necessarily there. It needs to be brought back. And we'll talk about some ideas of how to do that momentarily. There's also less, in, less formal interaction for sure, less meetings, less organizational um, um, memorandums, things going around. And so that's something to be conscious of. The fact that there's less physical environment engagement sets the tone because keep in mind that uh, communication is more than just the words that are spoken or things that are written down. There's communication that happens based upon people's attitudes and, and, and the, and the nonverbal cues. And so that oftentimes sets a tone in an organization and that needs to be recognized here. Um, along those lines, because of some of the, the disruption, there's not as much normal feedback for people that are doing their jobs. How are they really doing and, and, and can they get the, the kind of um, input that they need? And so awareness of that is critically important. And it's also important that uh, to recognize and, and to adapt to the fact that people are going through personal disruption. The routines that they've become used to, which are part and parcel to a culture and an organization, the changing emotions that they have, questions and doubts that they might have outside of the other work or their work situation are also coming into play. And so I raise this simply that all of those are factors that have an influence and an impact on an organization, a team's culture. And awareness is the first step to being able to deal with that and being able to, to nurture and, uh, uh, and, and strengthen a culture in this time. So let's go to the next slide here and provide some tips about it. And, and address some of the things that we are experiencing in the environment. One of the tips that we would suggest first and foremost would be to review the cultural foundation. Now is a good time for that, even at a distance. Is, and if your organization has established a strong vision, has established a mission and values, now is a good time if to, 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 uh, to have groups or the overall organization discuss those to bring them back to the forefront and say, hey, in light of where we are, we wanted to touch base on these and make sure that people still have them at top of mind and know that this is why we're here. Or if we're making some changes, given the fact that we're adapting to the situation, let's make sure that people have an opportunity to hear that and discuss it, make it an open conversation. This tool uh, that we're all using now, that Zoom or, or any of the other platforms that are available, as much as they're somewhat cumbersome, they can allow for open discussion for groups. And so uh, while it may not be ideal, now is the time to do that in an open format. 
like we talked about before, the other alternative here, or, or another uh, added piece, not an alternative, but a piece that to be added to the mix here is a survey. Getting some information from people in a format that is anonymous and where they can provide uh, their identification, their name, and, and, and who, if they want to get some kind of response, is important to get a good sense of how people are reacting and how people are feeling. Let's hit the next slide here. Um, and then coming back around to the, the communication side, now is the time to really establish new formal communication systems. While there may have been a formal meeting schedule within an organization that happened sometime during the week, during our normal operations, now is the time to reestablish that and reestablish others on top of it. Uh, as we mentioned before, better to have too much communication than too little and have a regular call or video conference if, if you've got the capabilities for video to give people that interaction. And it can be done both with large groups, the overarching organization, as well as sub teams. And I think sub teams are an important component, departments and groups of people that are working together on a regular basis and ensuring that they've got the ability to communicate on a regular scheduled basis to give some structure to what's going on. That structure really will serve as a support for the culture. Another one that's here, and I think that's important, is to introduce and encourage informal communications tools. Like I said before, there's a lot that happens in support of the culture and in support of people's understanding of where the organization is at and where it's going that happens in a, in a lunch setting or getting coffee. And while we might not be able to do that physically now, Encouraging people to take advantage of the tools that are available to them, whether it's FaceTime or whether it's just a phone call and do that with people that they normally would have done it in an office setting or in their, their work environment would be helpful because I think it gives people an opportunity to communicate less formally and just enjoy some of that social interaction with people that have a shared interest in their organization. On the next slide, we then want to talk a little bit about what do we do when all of this finally ends and we, and we return to some semblance of normal or what, at least what we feel will be normal then. An important point that I think we get across that, that is important in a culture in any, in any sense is when something significant happens in a culture, whether it's a significant win for an organization or a significant change or a significant situation like what everyone has experienced now. When you get through that, it's important to come together and celebrate the positives of what have come out of that. And the fact that as a shared experience, we took it to the next uh, stage and we made, through, made it through. And I think during that celebration, it's important to assess our response. How did we do in this circumstance? When we get through what we're experiencing now, can we look back and say, hey, what, what things did we learn from this? What are the opportunities for improvement so that if we face a different situation down the road that is really uh, confounding to us, how do we uh, be better prepared? Um, how do we want to maintain some of the things that we learned and maybe that we became more efficient as a result? Are there things that we should look at as instituting into our organization permanently? It, we're all experiencing a scenario right now where many, many people are working from home, where some of them in the past maybe have never done that. We may find that that becomes important and effective and more efficient for organizations. So how do we implement structures, processes, policies to encourage hanging on to the positives that we've learned here? The other thing that we would close with as is, is part of this is um, encourage a period of catch up after we get past this and, and return to our new normal post the pandemic situation. People are going to need to kind of reestablish themselves into their routines and into the, where they, the, the business environment that they were before. So give them some opportunity for that. We can't as leaders and, and people within organizations expect that there's going to be a, flip, a, a switch flipped and, and we go just exactly back to where we were prior to March. Um, there needs to be a transition and that's an important thing in order to ensure the health of the culture. And so with that, I think um, we'll open it up to questions and for Francine and I, because both of us have touched a lot of organizations in, in, within, our, within our roles with bids. Thanks. Great, thank you so much, Todd. We do have a few questions and uh, just a reminder to those in the audience, please feel free to submit your questions either in 
um, the Q&A function or in the webinar chat, and we'll get to as many as we can. Um, but starting it off, uh, Todd, you talked a little bit about personal disruption, which calls to mind the broader psychological and emotional impacts. What advice would you offer to managers and leaders who are trying to keep their teams motivated during a very strange time for all of us? Well, I'm going to let Francine put two cents in first, and then I'll add to it, because I'm sure she's got some thought about that with all of her experience. Francine, can you hear us? Okay, sorry, I, I was muted. There you go. <laughs> so, um, again, with that, I think it's managers making sure that they reach out to their employees doing those one-on-ones and just having conversations about how employees are feeling and is there any support that they need from their manager for them to be able to, uh, to do their job adequately. So we just have to take it head on and just acknowledge that I as a manager may feel stress and I know that my employees and, I, and I'm here to help. Yeah, and I would add to that that I think focusing on the goals at hand that we can strive for and we can be making progress on is an important way psychologically to keep people for lack of a better term, happy and engaged, is that say, hey, we, while, we, while things have changed significantly and we may not be able to address all of the plans that we had prior to this, if there are some that we can, let's focus on those and let's talk about those and let's talk about the progress we're making and the impact we're having on those because I think that serves as optimistic and, and really has an impact on, on psychology. Great, thank you. Okay, um, do you recommend removing furloughed employees from communication or keeping them in the loop? Well, my, my opinion, and I'll let Francine also give hers, would be if you're expecting people to be engaged with your organization again in the future, you should keep the communication flowing to them. It, it'd be one thing if, you, if this is a permanent a disconnection from the organization, but if you, if you want people coming back, they should know what's going on and being aware. It's that, that, that keeps them engaged and it keeps them feeling like there is a future for them in the organization. Francine, I don't know if you have something else to add to it. No, I, I agree with that, Todd, because if, they're not, if, they're, if they are not in the communication loop, then they can take that as a signal that they're not valued and then they're probably more apt to go away. Great, thanks. Okay, um, next question. So culture is a hard thing to change. How can companies and organizations use this current crisis when all companies are being forced to change and adapt to transform their culture? And then the follow-up to that would be, how can we turn this quarantine into a good thing from a cultural standpoint? Christine, you wanna go first? So um, with that, I, I think that as Todd mentioned is, if we can, is to do some type of pulse survey and the questions that are asked on that, we have to make sure that as a management team, a leadership team, you're going to be willing to address that. And so you can answer some quick questions around culture to see how A, people view it versus against what we think the culture is. But I, I think poll surveys are, 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 are really good. When I, I look at a recent poll from the Gallup that was released at the end of March around COVID-19, 45% uh, of people that responded to that poll felt that their organization doesn't care about their well-being. So I, I think that, that, that that's concerning. So understanding why people feel that way and then what can we do to change so we have a better culture coming out of this. That's a, a spot on. And I, and I think I would add to it that leaders need to understand the why. If they have an intention of changing the culture because of a significant event, that's a good time to change a culture. Oftentimes that's a good catalyst for it. But why are you changing the culture? Is there something that has been lacking historically? Maybe it's that you identified that there has been not a strong sense of what the organization vision has been or not an adherence to values or even stated and, 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 um, and communicated values. Those are good. If, if that's your why, now is the time but make sure you understand what the why is and make sure that it's not just a why that's reactionary to the current situation and getting people's feedback on that, like Francine mentioned, through survey is really important. Great, okay. And what about larger companies uh, with multiple sites and departments, each of which might have their own cultures? 
what advice would you have for managers and staff in those types of organizations? So I think there it's important to understand what cultures and subcultures exist because that's very, as we talked about before, there is an, even in the largest of organizations that are distributed globally, there is something of an overarching culture of the organization that emanates from the organization's stated values and its cultural constructs. Now that gets somewhat diluted and changed as you get down into individual operating units, as you get into individual departments and even sub teams underneath departments. So I think what's important to recognize and acknowledge is that those, though there are different cultures within an organization and give people the tools to make sure that they're engaging, but also make sure that there is a reinforcement of that overarching culture. And that sometimes in larger organizations that's difficult to do and it's done in somewhat ineffective ways by just declaration of here's, we're going to just send out something in writing that goes out as much as possible to, to reinforce a culture, to influence a culture, verbal communication is important. And so even if, it, if, it's a, if it's a broadcast by the overarching organizational leadership across to make sure that they are, are communicating to folks that they understand the situation, but also that we're st holding steadfast to our cultural ideals is important, even if it has to be done in a recorded fashion because of different time zones and so forth. So I think recognizing the different factors and factions within an organization are important, allowing them to have tools to communicate and reinforce their unique parts of the culture, but then reinforcing from the top down is important as well. Francine, do you have anything else on that? No, I think that sums it up, Todd. Great, okay. And what are your thoughts on having meetings with the entire team and recommendations for how those should be structured? Sure. Francine, you wanna, you wanna take that one? So I, I think with meetings with the entire team, if we're, if we're talking about groups or if we're talking about the entire company, we can today, since a lot of people are working at home, we can leverage Zoom for people that may be working on site. Uh, we can also leverage Zoom so that everybody hears the same message at the same time and leadership is going to have to think about what is their communication plan and why are they communicating and what is it that they want people to take away from the communication that, that, they, that they are doing? Spot on, and I, I think the only thing I would add to that is, you know, getting consistent communication across the entirety of the organization is important. Having that consistent, that's why you have the large group, the entire group uh, kind of uh, engagement, whether it's a, a conference call, whether it's a video, video chat, whatever it might be getting that consistent communication across the entirety so people have the same set of information is important. Great, okay, it looks like we have about um, two more questions. So um, what tips do you have for employees that are currently in an environment where leadership may not be discussing culture right now? Bring it up. I think that, you know, and, and you can't say it universally for all leaders, but I think most leaders are interested in some feedback and input. And if, if you feel like it, that there isn't enough cultural conversation and that it's important, particularly in light of all of the changes people are experiencing, then as a person in that organization, bring it up. Be tactful about it. Um, be be uh, optimistic about it and say, hey, I think that this would be helpful and it, it would, it's important given where we are. The circumstances we're in give you a little bit more latitude to maybe to, to offer suggestions that in the past maybe you felt uncomfortable suggesting but I think that that's an important thing. Okay, and then finally, any last minute thoughts that employees can take back to their teams? Francine? So I, I think it goes back to what Todd uh, just said is any question that you have, please ask them so that they can be addressed so that we can be transparent and things can be brought out into the open. And I, I think that um, managers should uh, perhaps bring up maybe some of the difficult, the difficult subjects. You know, here's what I, I, I sense or I think that people are asking or that they have asked in other organizations to, to really start the conversation in a transparent, honest, and authentic way. Yeah, that's great. I would say, you know, communicate. You know, do it now. Make sure there's communication going on as much as possible so that people know what's happening. Acknowledge people. 
acknowledge the work that they're putting in, acknowledge the changes that are happening, acknowledge the fact that there's uncertainty, um, and, and let there be an openness to what's going on within the organization, even in, in, in spite of the fact that we're spread around. Great. And we did have one more question that just came in that I do think is um, you know, important. How often do you recommend sending out the Pulse surveys? And then um, do you reveal the results to the entire company? Or do you recommend revealing the results? Well, so, so two, two pieces to that. Normally, when you're doing an internal organizational survey, you might do it annually, at most maybe a couple times a year in most cases. It depends on what's happening within that specific organization. In light of the times that we're in now, and, and the way that we're off, offering it to our clients is to get a sense of people's working conditions, the tools they need, some of the tactical things, it probably needs to happen more frequently as we go through this current environment. So my recommendation right now is to even consider doing it monthly. Um, and that, that goes in, in concert with more regular communication, one-on-one -on -one communication happening between employees and supervisors and so forth, but a, but a more formalized or at least a tool for surveying to gather data. Uh, right now, it, it, considering doing it monthly every six weeks, just depending upon how long we're all in this kind of situation, which none of us really know, I think is important to see how things are changing and adapting because this is such a fluid situation. Um, and in sharing that information across the organization, I think is important. Now, some of the comments people may have, you know, particularly narrative comments might not be appropriate, but letting people know that, hey, we're hearing that, you know, you don't feel like you've got all of the technology tools you need. And so as a result of that, we've got established a team to help out with that. Or we're hearing that you don't feel like there's enough communication about the status of the organization and where we're, how we're adapting. Well, now we're gonna establish a regular communication vehicle. So I think that that's an important thing is to let, as, as once you've got the data, Acknowledge the data, acknowledge it across the organization, but also come prepared with a response that addresses some of the concerns. Or if there's, if there's things being expressed to say, hey, this is great, then acknowledge that as well and, and how we're going to sustain that going forward. Francie, I don't know if you had anything else to add on that. Uh, Todd, I agree with you with the action plan and uh, engaging employees to help develop those action plans and decide um, how we're going to go forward as a group, as a team. Well, great. Thank you both so much, um, you know, and just uh, Todd and Francine with Illinois Biz and for taking the time to lead us through this important discussion today. Um, I know I personally learned a lot and I hope everyone in the audience did as well. If you like this webinar, join us next Wednesday, April 15th at 10 a.m. when we'll be focusing on the internal organizational survey, um, including what it is, why it's important, and the value value of doing it now, um, which Todd and Francine just touched on. Uh, the Chicagoland Chamber remains committed to providing our members in the business community the advocacy, tools, and trainings needed to help your organization compete and recover. If you aren't a member yet, there are many benefits available to your company and your employers, employees when you join the Chamber, one of which is 50% off customized trainings from our partner, Illinois Biz, for our employee training program, which is funded through the Illinois Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity. Please contact me at kroadman at chicagolandchamber.org for more information. Finally, the Chamber will continue to bring you up-to-date guidance about COVID-19, including the impact to the business community and resources that are available for your organization. Please visit our website at chicagolandchamber.org for more information. And finally, this webinar, um, as mentioned, is being recorded and will be available on our website as well. Thank you so much for tuning in and look forward to um, providing you with another webinar next week. Thanks so much.